So the way people from the outside of Polynesia tend to see it is as a honeymoon destination. They see it as a very beautiful place, which indeed it absolutely is. Just spectacularly beautiful. But also, I think the understanding of what the islands are, who the people are, what's going on there, what the history of the place is, is very thin for many people. Part of the purpose in my work is to try to explain a little bit about what the kind of deeper history of these islands and these people actually is. This is the group of people who figured out how to conquer the last uninhabited part of the world. And those are the ancestors of the Polynesians. And so that's this kind of incredible story that I feel like people who go to Polynesia, they should know about this. My name is Christina Thompson and I am the editor of Harvard Review and the author of two books about the Pacific. And the first one is called Come on Shore and We Will Kill and Eat You All. It's a story of the contact era between Europeans, the outsiders, and the indigenous people of New Zealand. And then I wrote a second book which is called Sea People, The Puzzle of Polynesia. It's the story of the settlement of what is known as remote Oceania, which is really the middle of the Pacific Ocean big area, millions of square miles of ocean with small islands dotted here and there. The idea of that book is to explain who the people are who settled those islands, where they came from, how they got there. So quite a few years before I wrote the book, um, I was living in Honolulu with my husband and my first child, who was then a baby. and. I knew the story of Polynesia, I knew the story of the migrations, but I hadn't really spent a lot of time thinking about it. And then my husband, who's Maori and who is from New Zealand, his father died. And so he went back to New Zealand, he took the baby with him, and I stayed in Honolulu. And while I was there alone, I was thinking, of course, about them in faraway New Zealand, and I was thinking about how very distant that really was. It was thousands and thousands of miles away. And yet I also knew that the people in Hawaii and the people in New Zealand were like cousins. They had the same ancestry and they had gotten to these places by the same method, the same pathway. And I started thinking, wow, this is an amazing story. This is an incredible story. How did they do this? The first thing that's important to understand is the geography. The Pacific Ocean is absolutely enormous and basically empty. There are a lot of islands on the western side that we call Island Southeast Asia. There are thousands and thousands of islands in there, Indonesia, north of Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, all of these islands. And then as you move towards South America, there are fewer and fewer and fewer islands. And when you get out to some parts of the Pacific, there's one, that would be Rapa Nui, Easter Island. Or in the North Pacific, you have the Hawaiian chain, which is isolated, really. What happens is that you have this group of people who are starting about, say, about 5,000 years ago to kind of migrate. There are people who are living on the ocean. They take their food from the ocean. They pioneer some really interesting innovations in the technology of boats, including the outrigger, which enables them to be stable in the open ocean in a narrow craft. And they also start to innovate in terms of navigational techniques, how they're going to read the swells, what they're going to understand about the weather, and of course the sky, the stars, are going to be a huge part of this. And they just get better at this. And eventually, about a thousand years ago, they make voyages which are almost unimaginable in their length. They get all the way out to Samoa and Tonga, and then they make these long runs. The run from, say, Tahiti to Hawaii is like 2,400 miles. And there's maybe one atoll in the middle. It's a great question. Yes, yeah, so why did they do it? Maybe just the lure of the unknown, you know? I mean, it's really hard to know. But the thing is that when outsiders arrive in the Pacific, so Europeans basically, mostly, in the 16th and 17th, 18th centuries, there is almost no island that has not been inhabited. They have found Rapa Nui, which is the most isolated inhabited island in the world. They have found the Hawaiian chain, which is not even in the same kind of area. So they have really found everything, which means, by definition, that they have been exploring. When I think about the islands today, I think about sort of two histories. The deep history, which is the voyaging history of the people, and then of course the other thing I think about is the colonial history of the islands. The consequence of Europeans having arrived in the Pacific, and that has been a tough 
part of the history for the people who were already there. The question of what's important for people to understand about this history is related, at least in my mind, with why I wrote the book. Colonialism is hard on the people who are there when the imperial peoples arrive. There was, I think, a loss of, I don't know whether you want to call it out, the loss of autonomy, a loss of um, prestige, a loss of power. I mean, this is what happens to the people who get colonized. And one of the things about the voyaging story, the story of Polynesian voyaging, Polynesian exploration and settlement of the Pacific, of all of remote Oceania, is that it's a story of great strength and achievement. It's a great story in human history. This whole idea of understanding the deep history of the places that you visit is a, is a good thing. But also to understand that this is, this is a heroic history. This isn't just like, oh yeah, they've been there a long time. They've been there a long time, and what they had to do to get there is actually incredible. So we should recognize that.